We arrived in Moscow two days before joining the Travel All Russia tour group. Abe had been to Moscow many times during the 70s when he had a plant embryogenesis experiment on the joint USSR American Biological Cosmos 782 satellite and later ones. Like all our videos, this is a documentation of our experiences, not a documentary. We stayed at a Marriott Courtyard Hotel, only 15 minutes walk to Red Square. This video tries to capture our visit to Red Square and the surrounding area. As we walk, Abe recalls the 70s and 80s and points out some important places. This was my first trip to Moscow. Stop by this bake shop to get cappuccino and a chocolate chip cookie. Looks really good. These are some of the pictures on the wall. And then they had a few tables back here. We just learned that the building across the street is the Moscow Conservatory of Music. This is a view standing in front of the statue of Tchaikovsky. That's the coffee shop where we just had coffee and a chocolate chip cookie. And the Kremlin is down to our right. We are now approaching the Kremlin. We've been here a few hours and have already gotten tickets to a concert tomorrow night and been given tickets by a teacher and composer at the conservatory for the following night. These are some interesting buildings and plaques as we walk down the street. And here we are at the end of the street and in view of the Kremlin. So this is a branch of the University of Moscow and it's right across the street from view of the Kremlin. This is the Hotel National. It's five star and it's located right across from the Kremlin. We 
just across the street by the underground walkway. They're quite deep. There are many stairs going down and back up. It's the only way to cross the street. We're outside of Red Square. We're going to be going through the gates there before too long. We can see on the right-hand side just a little bit of the Onion Dome of St. Basil's Cathedral. That'll be the more familiar view to most people. This end here on the end of it is kind of a posh area with expensive restaurants and hotels, some of them European and shops. But once we get in there, on the right-hand side, we'll see things like Lenin's tomb. And on the left-hand side, the big department store that is called Goom. We'll see what it looks like. But then one of the entrances to the Kremlin itself will be visible where the big cars come out with all the politicians and what all. Years ago, when I was first here, when they were talking about everything was equal in Russia or the Soviet Union. I knew it wasn't true because as the big old Volga limousines came out, it was a little bit akin to 17th century and 18th century France, where the king would come out in his carriage and run over everyone and throw a few coins if they killed one or two people. But that's all right. Things are very different now, and there are a lot of tourists. It's uh, quite interesting. Okay, now we're inside the gate we've come through. We're in Red Square. And as you go in, you'll see a fair number of oldish buildings. In fact, we're in front of a Russian Orthodox church here. There's a service going on. It's Monday evening, half past seven, Moscow time. So if you listen carefully, you can actually hear some of the service. And this is the department store? Yeah, that's Gum. Gum, you see it? Now, I've been in there years ago when it was full of goods, and then on one of the latter trips when they were really hurting and the economy was dreadful, the shelves were all empty, there was nothing in there. It was just plain empty. Now in front of us is St. Basil's Cathedral. And that's been gussied up the person who designed that, of course, was blinded by the Tsar so that he wouldn't be able to make anything that was equivalently beautiful. Then to the right, this is Lenin's tomb. You can see that it's written in Cyrillic characters, Lenin. Now again, in the old days, people used to line up in huge, huge, almost endless lines to go inside. Now it's kind of fallen into disfavor of sorts. And the guards that used to be there, the military guards, used to change out every hour and do their high step strutting. There's a few guards there now, but they don't seem terribly formal and kind of relaxed, in fact. There's still a few tourists trying to take pictures. One of the big Kremlin towers is nice for photography right now because the sun is on the big clock. <laughs> 
Hello, my friend. Hola. Вырежите нас, да? No, I don't speak any Russian. Не вырежете? No, not. No language, no, no Russian, да? No Russian. Нет. The Nazis signed a peace agreement. What was that on? Was it 13 um, April or something? Whatever, I've forgotten the exact date, but that's when the war in Europe came to an end. They had a big show here. This is inside Jones department store. It's really huge and all the best of shop, Cartier, you name it. This is a huge uh, gateway. It's not as big as the one in Tiananmen Square in, in Beijing, but it's apparently one of the big public spaces in any city. But that's where all the old Soviet period displays and parades occurred. And of course, they had the, very recently, the parade celebrating the end of the Great War, as they call it, World War II. Have you heard these bells before? No, absolutely not. They don't sound terribly religious, do they? It sounds more like... It's hardly the even song being called, or the Angelus. This is one of the entrances to the Kremlin itself. The tower just rang 8 o'clock p.m. And I was telling Jean that, quote, in the olden days, that heavy wooden door opened and out came a string of black, shiny vodka limousines. And they were going high speed, not with the 
ramparts and blocks put there. I'm sure vehicles don't go in and out as easily as they used to do. But behind that wall is the so-called Kremlin. And you can see there's work being done on the towers. The whole thing was started, I think, somewhere in the 1600s. How much of it has been rebuilt, I don't know. But it's pretty massive. This view of the cathedral is quite a nice one. It's got a big statue in front of it commemorating 1818. There's a museum, apparently. I don't remember that there was a museum. It seems like a more recent innovation. But in any case, it's uh, quite impressive. The colors are incredible. This is this uh, wonderful little shop where we've had coffee, we had dinner last night. There are many ship shops very similar to it along this street. Our hotel is right up there and to the right. Very convenient because behind me all we have to do is walk down the street and we're at the Kremlin. And we're going to a concert tonight at the Academy of Music and also tomorrow night. While enjoying the sun and scenery, a lovely lady walking down the street stopped to chat. We introduced ourselves to Roz and insisted that she join us. We were very glad we did, for she's a remarkable person. Roz is British and lives with her husband part of the year in Moscow and part in Britain. In Moscow, she lives in a very interesting neighborhood where many musicians and composers had resided not far from where we were sitting. Roz asked if we would like to take a walk back to her apartment block. Let us begin by introducing Roz and sharing our experience. Things, which is a restaurant that's a favorite of mine. Um, okay. The, uh, I lost Moscow, um, burnt down. Um, only the stone building survived. So this is quite extraordinary to have a stone building that survived. There's a very famous composer, um, the love and not of, and um, uh, he died of a broken heart. Uh, Stalin denounced him, and he wasn't allowed to conduct in his um, uh, in his beloved theatre anymore. And he died of a broken heart. But inside is his house museum, uh, which has got some uh, lovely pictures in it, uh, which he was given when he did all his foreign travels. Um, and they have little concerts in there too. Um, and it's worth a visit. This is just a building that was associated um, with um, musicians who had um, dealings with the Bolshoi Theatre particularly. Okay, but now is it used? It's not a concert hall? Or... No, it's not a concert hall. No, this is a residential block. I see. And this is where people had their apartments. So this, uh, the apartment, this is a, mem a museum apartment um, of this conductor. Right. And the corner is a plaque to his wife, who was a soprano. <laughs> this was. She's a soprano singer. So it's all very musical around here. So, uh, it really is. Except this one guy. Sculpting. And he was famous for sculpting. There were lots of copies of 
sculpting, a sculpture he did of a naked woman with an oar. She was a, an oars woman. Um, anyway, people got prudish, and, uh, uh, and there are lots of copies made of it, so lots of um, seaside places made copies of it. Soviet woman being athletic and Soviet. But recently, somebody, uh, the, the statue has been um, returned um, and renovated and is back in Gorky Park and it's naked again. This square is now called Rostropovich Square, but only since last year. They suddenly started renaming squares. So there's a square opposite the Bolshoi Theatre, which has um, a, a bust of uh, Karl Marx, um, and that is now known as Karl Marx Square. Restoration uh, the back part is quite open. where Don Giovanni's statue comes to life in the opera. There's his night up here, at night time, he looks positively ghostly. Very grey light. Um, but these flowers have now got rather old. But the hero to the Armenians, even though he was born in Tunisia, Tiflis, um, and spent his life in Moscow. You know what happens to minorities if they get someone that can read and write, they elevate him to night. Not that. So the, no, he is. Uh, <laughs> It's quite an extraordinary um, sculptor, sculpture, sorry. And I've kept my eye out for it for many years. There was a graduate of Oberlin College named Frank Gullian who was sent to America Oberlin. He was from Sivas, Turkey. He went back, died in the genocide with him. But he was one of Barry Grafham's uh, colleagues. She was an American uh, missionary who went with the Armenians for a distance on the deportations. And then they told her, no, you can't go any further. And she went back. We've gotten to know her grand niece, I guess, is what she did. Her, her grandfather's colleague was a Frangulian. And I've said, what an unusual name. Well, you have to keep tracing them down. Like yeah, the but, at least, right but at least now it's unusual that I've seen this as a... Who would have guessed it, right? So this has the... There's a little flatness inside it. 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 There's a little flatness inside So Kachaturian lived in this building, so that's the reason they have his statue in this little square by the building. Time went rather disastrously. Um, and there's a very nice book about him called by, uh, um, by Julian Barnes, who's a British okay. novelist, mm -hmm. called The Noise of Time. Um, talking, uh, doesn't mention this um, aunt of my friend at all. Anyway, this guy um, is retired from being in the TV business um, and his retirement project is to create a website about his aunt, Margarita Kuss, K-U-U-S. Um, uh, and she was devoted to her composing. Uh, I might say her music is not to my taste, it's on the website and if you Google her you can find out all about her. But he was um, writing all about her and uh, wanted me to... He, Trans he speaks good English, but he had translated his writings into using Google Translate and wanted me to titivate them. Apart from which, I edited them quite severely because he was being extremely repetitive. And I'm not sure how much appreciated that. And then it turns out that most of the good stuff that he's written has already been written up. There is a journal which comes out in English, which is quarterly, which is devoted entirely to Shostakovich. Absolutely extraordinary. Hmm. Because so many people are potty about Shostakovich. Anyway, this guy um, had all kinds of, in the end, having been denounced twice by Stalin, uh, got final reinstatement um, and was an okay thing and got all kinds of orders and that's written down on the plaque below. But uh, he lived in this building too. 
<laughs> so the two most famous people to live in this building were Shostakovich and, um, well, no, sorry, three most famous people were Hachaturian, Shostakovich, and then the cellist Rostropovich. When they, when they unveil them, all kinds of people come and talk and they've got off the Who is this? This is Rostropovich again. Okay. But this was unveiled on the 10th anniversary of his death, so uh, April 2017. And she was a, fa a famous singer. As you can see, Roz and her husband have a very interesting apartment filled with books. We hope this has given you a brief view of Red Square, the Kremlin, and the surrounding areas.